can make plans all we want, but unless we have the seal of the Holy Spirit, unless we have the mark of the Holy Spirit, unless we have the empowerment of the Holy Spirit, unless we have the presence of the Holy Spirit, everything we are doing is vain and of no result. But the word says we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. We are getting in the word and we are getting in what we need to know for the upcoming year. Upcoming? It's here already. For the year 2023 that's already here. Hallelujah. Where we praise the Lord who allowed us to see this new year. We praise the Lord who allowed us to enter this new year. Through the gate of the first day of the week. Amen. Amen. Through the gate of the first day of the week. When I say the first day of the week, it's very important. It means a lot to us. We understand that our Savior rose again the first day of the week. And so prophetically speaking, for us, this house, what we are having is a year that is for us the year of the resurrected life. Yeah. The year of the resurrected life. If you go to John 20 verse 1, it clearly says that on the first day of the week, the women Mary Magdalene, they went to the tomb and Jesus was no longer there. I say Mary Magdalene because she's the one who was clearly named. But there were several women that went. The word of God says now, on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb early while it was still dark and saw that the stone had been taken away from the tomb. On the first day of the week, they went there and they did not see him. This is very prophetic to us as we are entering this new year through the gate of the first day of the week. Let's go to John uh, 20 verse 19. I said that this is for us the year of the resurrected life. We need to understand what the resurrected life is so we know what to expect. The word of God says on the evening of that day, the first day of the week, the doors being locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said to them, peace be with you. So the first day of the week, he rose again, he appeared to the woman, and he went and he entered and he saw the disciples. The first day of the week, this is the first day of the week. And this starts a new year for us. But it's not just going to be any year. Again, it's going to be the year of the resurrected life. When you talk about resurrected life, you talk about death that happened prior to resurrection. When you talk about resurrected life, you talk about beating that happened prior to the death and to the resurrection. When you talk about resurrected life, you talk about humiliation that happened prior, <laughs> prior, <laughs> prior to the death and to the resurrection. When you talk about resurrected life, you talk about loneliness uh -huh, because he was in the tomb by himself. You talk about loneliness. When you talk about resurrected life, you talk about your normal position that you used to occupy. Remember, I'm talking about Jesus. I'm talking about the King of glory. I'm talking about the one who was with the Father, who is God, and came down here. He left his divinity, and he came down here on earth. And even as he came down here on earth, People who could not even talk to him were able to beat him, were able to insult him, were able to spit on him. When I talk about resurrection, I'm talking about someone who was in a position of authority, someone who came, who put himself here down low and who allowed just anybody to talk to him because there was a purpose to be fulfilled. Uh, no, this is not for everybody, but some people did go uh, through that, you know, lowering of status. Mm -hmm. This is not for everybody, but some people did go through humiliation. This is not for everybody, but some people went through 
death. This is not for everybody. But some people went through insult. This is not for everybody. But some people went through loneliness. This is not for everybody. But some people went through insult. This is not for everybody. But some people went through mockery. All of that happened before the death. Before the death. Before the death. But the thing is, it didn't end with the death. After the death and after the burial, something happened. That first day of the week, something happened. And for that something to be seen, the stone had to be rolled away. You see? This is a message that maybe sounds like an Easter message. But this is a message for us that God wants us to hear in this hour. And so what happened is he was, he was buried, not even in his own tomb, but somebody's tomb. And on the first day of the week, when the women went to take care of the body, he was no longer there. Now we need to understand this resurrected life so that we can expect it for ourselves in this year of the resurrected life. So let's look a little bit at what happened. When Jesus rose again, and, and then let's go to John 20, verses 11 to 15. The day that Jesus rose again, these women, Mary and Magdalene and them, they went there, as I said just a few seconds ago, to, to, to take care of the body. These are people that cared about him. These are people that loved him dearly. And, and these are people that were hurt when he was hurt. And they went to take care of him. But when they got there, later, let me read the passage before I get ahead of myself. The word of God said, but Mary stood weeping outside of the tomb. And as she wept, she stooped to look into the tomb. And she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had laid. Uh, one of the head, one at the head and one at the feet. They said to her, woman, what? Are you weeping? She said to them, they have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have led him. Having said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said, woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you seeking? Supposing him to be the gardener. Let me stop right here. Supposing him, you can read the rest of the sentence. Supposing him to be the gardener. Now imagine Jesus had just been beaten. Jesus was just whipped, right? All these stripes, his body was broken. He was bleeding. A thorn was placed on his head. He was bleeding. He was not recognizable. But he comes out of the tomb and she suppose him to be the gardener. This is telling me that the wounds were not visible. This is telling me that he came out of the womb, he was clean. This is telling me that the side effect of all the beating, the, all the, 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 the scars were not there anymore. He just looked like somebody. I'm talking to you about the resurrected life. He just looked like he didn't go through anything. He looked like he did not go through anything. I'm talking to you about the resurrected life because this year is for you the year of the resurrected life. So please follow me. He came out of the tomb. She looked at him. He looked like a normal human being, just like a gardener. She supposed him to be a gardener. Really? After what he went through, where are the scars? Where is the blood? It was only three days that he spent in a tomb. What happened? God did some wonders for there not to be any scars anymore. The only thing that was left were those, those holes and they were left on purpose. If everything else was healed, those could have been healed as well. But there had to be something left. For people to know that it was really him. In the same manner as you are 
You have just entered your year of resurrected life. You will look like just anybody that didn't go through anything. You, you will look like, you know, a normal person. There, there, there will still be a little something because there has to be a reminder of where God took you. But people are not going to recognize you for the wounds that you used to have. You will look like a, a regular, you know, person that did not go through anything. She supposed him to be a God man. And I'm telling you, as we have entered our year of resurrected life, there were some wounds, there, there was some bleeding, there, was, there, there, there were scars, there were mistreating, there were uh, humiliation, there were insult, there were belittlement, there were all kinds of things, but those things are not leaving anything on you. They are not leaving any mark on you because the Lord God Almighty went by and when he goes by, he takes care of business and those wounds are not to be remembered anymore. As you are entering 2023, what are you expecting as you experiencing this year of the resurrected life? You should not be expecting these things to keep showing. You should not be expecting these things to be seen. You should be expecting actually people not to even know that you went through something. Not to know that you went through something. The word says, supposing him to be the God man. Someone that was insulted like that. Someone that went through all of these things. Why is it difficult to recognize him? Because God did a healing job. Because, because God did a job of restoration. Because God did a cleaning job. Because God did a polishing job. What are you to expect in this year, 2023? What are you to desire? Because remember, we need to desire what God wants for us. We need to desire what God spoke about us. We need to agree with what God said. So what are we to agree with in this year 2023? What are we to desire? We are to desire this resurrected life where it looks like we went through nothing. Just as it was the case for Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And the fire came out, did not smell anything. Not only did it look like everybody else, but it was not like everybody else. Let's go to Luke 24. We're going to Luke 24. It's a long passage, but I'm just going to read for us verse 31. But if you want to read it for yourself later, it's verses 13 to 35. And so these disciples were walking on the road to Emmaus. This was the third day, the first day of the week. The third day after Jesus' death, and it was the first day of the week. And they were walking on the road to Emmaus. And these were people that cared about Jesus. These are people that had high hopes for Jesus. I mean, he came, he preached, and they believed him. They really wanted him to fulfill what he was supposed to fulfill, which is to set the people, the, uh, to set Israel free. And then, while they were talking, Jesus had just been put in a tomb. Jesus had just been buried. It was the third day. And they were walking. And they were talking about it. And Jesus comes to them and walks alongside of them. And Jesus said, what are you talking about? And they are surprised and they look at Jesus. What? Are you the only one that has visited Jerusalem and you don't know what happened? There was this Jesus of Nazareth who was a prophet who we thought was going to save us. And he is dead and buried. And Jesus gives them instructions. Jesus gives them ins instructions. 
about what they read in the Bible. He called it, it even calls them foolish. He says that, don't you know that what you were reading was about me? It was about Jesus. Immediately, he didn't say me. He said it was about Jesus, the Savior. And then he walked with them until they, they got to the village where they were going. And, and as they got to the village, Jesus kept going. And they called him. They insisted. And they called him. And he came in. And when he came in, he broke the bread with them. And after he broke bread with them, the word of God says, and their eyes were open. And they recognized him. And he vanished from their sight. I'm talking to you about the resurrected life. Because this year, 2023, that we are entering, is not just going to be a life of physical matters. It's going to be a life of spiritual matters. The way we are going in this life, the more spiritual you are, the better. And so not only did it look like everybody else, but it was not like everybody else. And in this year, 2023, there's going to be opportunities for you to exercise that spirit of yours. There's going to be opportunities for you to impact someone spiritually. To impact people. We are going beyond the physical things. We are going into spiritual matters. Not only did Jesus come out of it physically clean, but he came out of it able to demonstrate even more power than he did before. You are going to be given the opportunity to demonstrate the Jesus that you believe in. And this year, 2023, you are going to be given the opportunity to show that you truly has gone through, you truly have gone through resurrection. So you will look like everybody, but you're not going to be like everybody else. It is time for you to see yourself in different lights. It is time for you to see yourself beyond, I need to pay my bill. It is time for you to see yourself for who God wants you to be. A spirit, a spiritual being. And as you are entering this year, 2023, as a resurrected person, opportunities will be given to you for that. This year, you will look like everybody else, but you will not be like everybody else. Amen. This year, look, look, <laughs> look like everybody else, but be ready to surprise people around you. Amen. The same way Jesus was looking like everybody else, and they talked to him and didn't even know that it was him. But an opportunity was given. He broke bread and the eyes were open. In the same manner, you will look like everybody else. But you will be given an opportunity to demonstrate the Jesus that you believe in. Not only spiritual impact, but you will also have a financial impact this year. goes hand in hand. You're going to have a financial impact this year. You're going to have wisdom and you're going to have financial stability. Jesus, when he rose again, he, he, he walked in those places where he used to walk before he died. He walked in the same area where they saw him crucified. It is in that same place that he walked. And 1 Corinthians 15, 6, 15, 6, yes, 1 Corinthians 15, 6 tells us that he was seen by over 500 people. Then he appeared to more than 500 brothers at one time, most of whom are still alive, through some, though some have fallen asleep and 
Paul, who is writing this, says, while I'm writing this, the people that saw him, some of them are still alive. So if I lie, they can testify. That's what he was saying. But what are we getting out of this? Because this is our year of resurrected life. What are we getting out of this? Jesus' resurrection was not a private matter. It was not something that was private. It was not something that was hidden. It was not something that was done in a corner. God made sure that more than 500 brethren saw the resurrected Jesus. I'm talking about your year of a resurrected life. So if the resurrection of Jesus was not private, God is saying to you too that your resurrected life is not going to be private. And this is why he says that he set a table before you in the presence of your enemies. And so your resurrected life is going to be seen. People are going to testify that truly God has done something in your life. And you are no longer the same person. It's not going to be a private matter. Your resurrected life is going to be a public thing. Just like people were able to testify of Jesus. Reason, they will testify of you. People will see. People will see. They will see, not just so that you can boast, but they will see, just so they can glorify your Father who is in heaven. They will see, and they will be able to testify themselves that your God is mighty. They will see. The resurrection life is not a private life. It's not a private matter. Let's go to John 20, 19. John 20, 19, we read it earlier. And the word says, on the evening of that day, the first day of the week, so that same day when he rose again, the word says the doors were locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews. Jesus came and stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. So I'm talking to you about your resurrected life. And as I'm reading this passage, you need to understand that the doors were closed. You need to understand that there was no way for him. But the doors being closed did not stop him. In the same manner, in your resurrected life, doors being closed to you will not stop you. You will still be able to break through. You will still be able to be where you need to be. So if a door is closed, don't worry about it. Because the Lord is making a way for you to appear where you need to appear. Walking through doors or walking through walls is breakthrough. So the same way Jesus broke through walls, you too are able to break through walls in your resurrected life. So do not worry about closed doors. Your resurrected life shows that you are unstoppable. Your resurrected life shows that you are unbreakable. Your resurrected life shows that you are walking through regardless of the obstacle. Your resurrected life shows that you live through walls. Your resurrected life shows that there is nothing and no one that is of a physical matter that can stop you. It is impossible. The only one that can stop you is the Lord God Almighty, who is the God who changes time and circumstances, circumstances and seasons. So as, as I'm talking about your resurrected life, please hear me and hear me very well. Your resurrected life has to do with the fact that you will not have any visible sign upon you. So you will look like everybody else, but you will not be like everybody else. You will be able to impact others around you in a spiritual way. And even as you impact others around you in a spiritual way, there's not going to be any obstacle that can stop you. So there's a reason why you are hearing this on January 1st. That is because surely there's going to be a door that's going to be closed somewhere, but it's not going to stop you. It's not going to cause you to lament and cry and grumble and murmur. It's going to remind 
remind you of the fact that you are walking now as a resurrected being and that door is not going to stop you. You are going to push through and you are going to make it. Because the resurrected body does not get stopped by walls. The resurrected body does not get stopped by doors. Please hear me very well. And even as you walk through 2023, remember this preaching. Remember this word. Doors may be closed, but they are not there to stop you. Amen. And there was a wall that was risen in, uh, in, uh, that was built around Jericho. That wall was built, and the word of God says that the door was shut, and no one could come in, and no one could go out. Why? Because they were afraid of the, of the God of the people of Israel. But that wall was not an, uh, an obstacle for them. That wall was not an obstacle for them. Because their God caused that wall to crumble. And when you think about how that wall crumbled, it didn't fall forward or fall backward. Uh, read about the story of the wall of Jericho. Read about the history, not just the story. But read about the history of the wall of Jericho. And you will understand how that wall fell. It was not forward or backward. It went down. Read about it. Read about it. So in 2023, as you are walking in your resurrected life, please don't let any door stop you. Please don't let any obstacle cause you to think, oh, I cannot make this. No. No, no, no. You are walking in your resurrected body. <laughs> you are walking in your resurrected life. What could have happened before has already happened. What suffering could have happened before has already happened. Now, don't let that stop you. And renew your mind. Renew your mind to positivity. Renew your mind to positivity. And the word of God says here, Jesus came and stood among them and said to them, peace be with you. The God who you serve, who is causing you to be walking in your resurrected life, is the God of peace. And as you are walking in 2023, peace shall be with you.